Folks, it's Dane at uh, Jonah Guitar, and I'm just uh, gonna stand here for a second. Let you read my shirt. Um, that's probably enough time, unless you had to like blow it up. And I'm standing in front of uh, uh, this guitar here, and I'm holding this guitar here uh, just to increase the cool factor. Because as you know, this is a pretty cool guitar. I really like the way this thing turned out. Anyway, this video has nothing to do with either of these guitars. I'm going to push this back a bit. Maybe get myself somewhat in the uh, picture. Well, this is the intro for the Nippon guitar. And uh, there's not as much video as I had hoped for originally. So you really aren't seeing any of the... The actual repair. Uh, I steamed uh, the inside of the guitar up around the, the neck block uh, in order to jack the cracked top plate that was straddling the neck and pushed back into the sound hole and uh, was able to jack that out and, and get it almost completely flush with where it was originally. It's uh, it's the, the ever slightest little bit of a step still, uh, but you'll see it, you'll hear it. Uh, I do go in with a camera trying to show you the the cleats that I put in, and then there were these these secondary, almost like bridge plates, only obviously not at the bridge, up around the the upper bout uh, under the top that was, I I guess was intended to keep this exact same sort of thing from happening, but all of the glue, glue clay came loose and it, it did it. So, uh, as you already know, I lost a ton of video. Uh, I may still get it back, but at this point I want to keep getting, putting out what I have. And so it's a very small amount of video on this, uh, pretty cool guitar. And, um, you watch it and, uh, you, you'll see the guitar repaired. You just won't get to see the actual repair job done. Um, all right, so enjoy. All right, so I've got the, uh, the Nippon um, strung back up. And uh, let's see if I can play it. Jeff Healy, although I'm not comparing myself to him as a guitarist. It's, it's always interesting to try to play chords when you're not gripping a guitar normally. See, uh, see, how do you do it? How should you do it? finger. <laughs> no, that was a weird exercise. Anyway, so uh, got it strung up. Said all that and did all that just to say I got it strung up. So um, the action is at about 364 which is very low, uh, especially on an acoustic guitar. The neck, uh, I I did set that truss rod, and what did I do with it? I don't remember. It's been a couple days. Uh, it's got to be about eight thousandths. Maybe more. I could raise it, you know. I could get a little more action. The thing is, what the neck isn't bad. What I need to do is raise the saddle if I really want to raise the action. I think that the saddle's fairly low because it's been cut down over the years to compensate for the neck pulling in and up. And uh, since I've was able to flatten that neck out a bit or push it down at the nut end a little bit. I think um, the saddle could stand to come up. I'm not going to change it. It plays great. 
Uh, I might gain a little volume by adding a little bit here because I'd have a little more break angle, a little down, more down pressure on the strings. But uh, I think I'm going to call it good right there. I'm going to try to set my camera, take my camera off the uh, stand here and try to get you inside here. I keep talking about the reinforcement up in the shoulder on each side and then I put I put cleats in right next to this 45 degree angled uh, block support block here and I put cleats next to that and then I put cleats right underneath here uh, on the sound hole side of the uh, transverse brace. So I'm going to try to stick the camera in there and with a light and hopefully I need another hand but hopefully I'll be able to uh, get you some sort of I actually thought about buying one of those scopes just so I could show you this but I, I want to get the video stuff done get the guitar back to the customer so uh, I'm just going to go this route Trying to look at my monitor while I'm doing this. Uh -huh. So you see up around the neck block, you can sort of see, you're looking in the mirror, first of all, not at the back. I need to have a better... Better reflection here. I got it. This isn't working. All right, so now, pretty much right in the center of the monitor, you can see the curving down there, or it's up there rather, <laughs> the, the mirror. Okay, uh, and you see this um, little line that's parallel to that curving, and then if you come around, you can see it's notched, and then I don't know if I can catch the side of that center block or not. You can kind of see the edge of that center block coming up here, yeah. So all of that, uh, the edge here that's closest to the center got re-glued. Transverse block got re-glued. Um, transverse brace, I should say, which is right there. Uh, actually, there's a better shot of that center block. Um, yeah, and then if you, I did it in mahogany. So right up at the very apex between the center block and the top, there's a strip of mahogany there. Uh, that you can see and uh, yeah so I think I'm seeing it in the camera I'm not looking at the monitor now okay let's try this okay and then if we come all the way up to the there you can see that easily enough um, the uh, cleat on the sound hole side and then the other side is exactly the same so whatever you want to call that big reinforcement pad uh, like I said it's probably the thickness of a bridge uh, plate but it goes all the way around the edge it goes out there it's not quite to the far edge of the guitar but it's close to the front bout the front of the guitar and then it gets farther away as it goes toward that edge i don't know maybe a lot of wasted time trying to explain that to you guys but um and gals i noticed i have almost two percent of my my uh watchers or viewers are are ladies and so i want to thank you for that all right so a little sound So these are the Diderio the 10s that I have on here. I like Earthwoods and I normally use those. And I had a couple sets that I had and I couldn't find them so I put the Diderios on. Although uh, those are a good string also. Um, yeah. It doesn't matter than anything, I just couldn't find the strings I wanted. But, um.
to not play any particular pattern that might sound like something else. So we'll just... with the results on this. I uh, got a nice cleanup, got the fretboard oiled up again, had the tuners taken off, everything cleaned up really good on the peg head, and uh, reinstalled and tightened up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clip the E and the B string off. I usually leave those just to fuzz along until I'm done in case I needed to unwind things for any reason. And if you clip them too soon, then you usually end up chasing them. Um, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, I thought I would just go ahead and measure the nut width, which is something I forgot to do. I had a RG something, RG4 maybe, old Ivan is, super strat in the other day, and I wanted to measure the nut width. It felt really wide, and I forgot to measure it. Uh, this nut width here is right at 11 six, one, one and 11 sixteenths which is uh, kind of where I build a lot of guitars, although I'm trying to thin them out a little bit, um, make them closer to 5 eighths, but uh, 5 eighths is standard for Fender stuff. A lot of acoustics, uh, you find them pushing three quarters. to life and playable hope you enjoyed this series folks uh keep watching there's always more to come okay so just a couple more words about this repair um i devised these blocks that went into the sound hole you can see the radius and then the step so the the step uh just sat on top of the soundboard while this other radius sat in the soundboard and I uh, put tape or something on there to kind of pad it. I did the same thing on the other end. So you have the radius and then you had exactly the same amount of offset going to the neck and it hit fit square right up against the end of the neck. And then I stuck this, this jack in between the two halves and was able, uh, surprisingly actually in one, one go around, with steam that guitar and then just crack the crank the jack out. So that's that's how it happened and it worked out really well. Um, you know, uh, you know the drill. Uh, click, ding, like, whatever, all the all the crap that uh, we want you to do. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Just have some fun in your shop, doing what you like to do. Take care.